We're back, joined by Dr. Paul Kenger, one of the most formidable, and I think correctly, highly regarded historians of our time. He is today a professor of political science at Grove City College, where he directs its Center for Vision and Values. He is the author of more books than you can shake a stick at. I'll mention two that are particularly relevant to our visit today. The Communist, Frank Marshall Davis, The Unstold Story of Barack Obama's Mentor, and Dupes, How America's Adversaries Have Manipulated Progressives for a Century. Dr. Kenger, welcome back to Secure Freedom Radio. It's great to have you. Yeah, Frank, you guys are great. Always good to be with you. Thanks. Thank you. Well, listen, I'm interested particularly in sort of assessing with you as an historian, but also as a keen observer of current events as well, the Obama legacy, which we're told is driving us towards a deal with the Iranians. And also, if I could ask you to sort of stitch the two together, the role in this presidency played by a woman by the name of Valerie Jarrett. Talk about both of those, if you would. Well, yeah, really, Valerie Jarrett should be a household name. I mean, she has been far and away, Frank, the most intimate, influential advisor to Obama. I would say really that Obama's soulmate is, uh, well, let me say, his political and ideological soulmate is Valerie Jarrett, okay, Uh, less than Michelle. If you want to know who the real first couple is that's running the White House, it's Obama and Valerie Jarrett. I mean, she's been with him for, what, seven years now. She's far and away his single most intimate advisor. She knew him back in Chicago. And, I mean, he absolutely follows to a T pretty much her entire ideological line on foreign policy, on economics, even on culture, from Iran to uh, lighting up the the White House in rainbow colors. (laughs) He's actually said that he runs everything by her. uh, That's right. right. That's right. All right. So talk about then what is her background? What is her political ideology and, and lineage, if you will? In the books you mentioned, Dupes and the Communists, I had a lot on Jarrett and her background. But the good folks at Judicial Watch just filed FOIA requests, and they got FBI files released on three key Valerie Jarrett people, background people. And this is pretty easy to follow. One is her father-in-law, Vernon Jarrett, who died. The other is her father, James Bowman, who died. They both died fairly recently. And the third is her grandfather, a man named Robert Taylor. And, and all three of these were communists. All three of them were literal communists. Actual card-carrying communists. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, you know, we use the term red diaper baby, which is, which is appropriate in certain cases. I mean, our friends like David Horowitz and some others will tell you that they were raised red diaper babies. Valerie Jarrett, uh, I mean, this woman fits the profile totally. Yeah. But what has that meant, Paul, in terms of her policy predilections these days? Yeah, it, it, I would just say generally it's safe to say that it explains why she's generally so far to the left. And, and I mean, you can, you can apply that in a lot of different areas. Now, to be totally candid, Frank, the one thing that's kind of thrown me off, I don't know how much it applies to what she's doing to, to the Iranians, what we're doing with the Iranians, uh, it, it just in, a, in an odd way. I mean, her father was James Bonham, uh, James Bowman, with all of these really radical, literal communist ties. I mean, this guy's FBI file is just a who's who of communist front groups. He, he, he was born in Washington, February 1923. He eventually lived in Chicago, where he became really politically radical and even knew Obama's mentor, Frank Marshall Davis. Then he goes to Denver, Denver. then he moves to Iran in 1955. And that's where Valerie was born, very shortly after that, just months after they moved, they moved to, to, to Iran. And I'm not sure to what extent Valerie's obvious sympathies for the Iranian regime uh, were a result of that experience, because, because in a way they moved there when the Shah was in charge. And, and so for normal people, <laughs> right, you, you would expect them to be – anti-Ayatollah, anti-Islamic extremists. But then again, they go there already being radical leftists. Right. And, and you know, this is really the key point. Uh, you've done such important work on this. Again, our guest is Dr. Paul Kengor of Grove City College. 
in terms of understanding the nature of the adversaries we're facing. And uh, one of our colleagues uh, at the center, Jim Simpson, has recently done a little monograph uh, along a similar line called The Red-Green Axis. Oh, he's in, very good. In which he's talked about how this coming together of people who may have very different views as to what the end state they aspire to is, but they nonetheless have a common enmity towards our country. And whether they're radical leftists or whether they're Islamists, uh, they nonetheless can make common cause. And and I guess, Paul, I, I'm interested in how this may be playing out as well in the putative uh, Democratic nominee to succeed President Obama in the White House and a very influential advisor to her. I'm speaking, of course, of uh, former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton and her longtime aide, Huma Abedin, a woman who has had uh, extensive ties, personal ties, that are even more checkered, perhaps, than uh, Valerie Jarrett's. Talk about that, that prospect. Yeah, yeah, it's fascinating. So you could have a kind of a continuation from Obama and Valerie Jarrett on to those two, if Hillary Clinton would, would be elected. You know, I think, again, here, Frank, of the famous James Burnham axiom that uh, for the left, the preferred enemy is always to the right. And, and really, in a way, for the left with these folks, the preferred enemy is always America. And, and you certainly see that with the red-green axis. And, and, and so, yeah, I mean, there could be a fascinating continuity from one sort of political ideological first couple with Obama and Valerie Jarrett to another, in this case, um, you know, Hillary and her longtime sidekick Uma. So it's, uh, it's, his, his, I mean, look, the American public, <laughs> that's who can stop this. They can stop this cycle of insanity if they would just pay attention to these things and not vote for these people. I'm not even telling you people vote Republican. I'm just saying quit voting for people like this on the far left. Uh, this is extremely damaging. Let me ask you, uh, Paul Kinger, in closing, because we're almost out of time, um, to the extent you can, and I, I understand historians are loath to make predictions on how history will judge contemporary events. But having said that, given what you've been describing, uh, how do you assess the likelihood that President Obama's legacy will be seen to have been a disaster for America and its national security and foreign policy interests? Oh, yeah. Well, absolutely. It's it, it very bad. I mean, certainly the worst since Jimmy Carter. And I mean, look, you just take the, our, some of our main adversaries, Russia and, and Iran, and by no argument can you say that he's going to have improved those situations. Uh, he's, he's made them only worse. The situation with Putin is terrible, with what Putin is doing in the Ukraine and throughout Eastern Europe with, with allies like Poland and the Czech Republic. And then you go to the Middle East and the entire Islamic world, the rise of ISIS. Uh, the possibility of a caliphate that we never thought could have ever happened so easily. I look back at Dinesh D'Souza's movie that seemed like hyperbole. I was in that film, and, he, and he, even then, some of the stuff I remember that Dinesh said about the Middle East, I thought, oh, I don't know about that, Dinesh. It's coming true. Yeah, it's understated, if anything. Unfortunately, it's, it's worse than that. And I guess, you know, I've come up with this formulation. I hope you'll put it into one of your books at some point, <laughs> Professor. The Obama Doctrine it seems to me, can be reduced to nine words. Embolden our enemies, undermine our friends, and diminish our country. And boy, if I look at this legacy, particularly what Valerie Jarrett and Barack Obama are, are wreaking with their Iran deal, they all sort of are evidenced in that and profoundly worrying, as you say. This is a time that is going to be uh, seen, I think, through the lens of history as inexplicable that the American people uh, supported it, allowed it to happen, and, uh, and were so badly served in the process. Paul Kanger, we have to let you go, I'm afraid. I'm delighted to refer to one other of your absolutely magnificent books about one of my favorite people, The Judge, William P. Clark, Ronald Reagan's Top Hand. Thanks for these extraordinary works of, uh, of historical record keeping and for your insights into the history we're making today. Keep it up, my friend. Come back to us again, if you would, very soon. Gordon Chang joins us next. We'll get the latest on what's happening with China's stock market and what it means for us. Straight ahead. 